Hi friends, it's Wit. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back here today with another video to help empower and encourage you on your path to purpose. Okay guys, so today I want to get in deep with you all about focusing on the right things. We get so caught up in the world and what everybody else is doing, what type of sins everybody else has going on, what type of life they're living, what they deserve, that we miss out on our own purpose. So today I just want to help bring awareness to our own issues and hopefully remove some of these, help you remove some of these distractions so that you can get focused on your purpose. So first thing I wanted to get into was a story that I read whenever I was doing my daily reading and it just already went in with what I was thinking, what I was feeling geared towards with from the Holy Spirit. And I just got the direction that I needed to talk about focus. So whenever I got into the word, I did my prayer, you know, prayed that I would receive what the Holy Spirit was trying to show me and be able to deliver a good message for you all from that. And first thing I get to was the story of Mary and Martha. So Mary and Martha were two, Mary and Martha were two sisters and as Jesus and the disciples were, you know, going out and spreading the good news. Sorry, all my neighbors, my dryer is going. So I apologize for the interference, but hopefully it doesn't distract you too much. But anyhow, so Jesus and the disciples were going out spreading the good news and Mary decided or Martha decided to invite Jesus in for dinner. So she's focused on this big meal. I want to make this big special dinner for Jesus. Make it special. I want to just, you know, serve. And I'm sure she had the right intentions as we usually do. And as she's doing that, she's getting frustrated and worried and she's just overwhelmed. Martha's sitting on the floor listening to Jesus and his teaching. So I probably messed that all up. Sorry, y'all. It's late as usual. But anyhow, Mary's sitting on the floor listening to Jesus' teaching. And Martha gets frustrated. She's like, Jesus, is this even fair that she's sitting on the ground while I'm doing all the work? And Jesus got her right together. He was like, she's doing what she needs to be doing. The only thing she needs to be concerning herself with is what, exactly what she's doing. She's seeing everything she needs to see. It's you that is upset and worried about the wrong thing. Focusing on dinner, I mean, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that Jesus said he was hungry. There's no implications that he asked for a big dinner. He was there. He was going through the cities spreading the good news. So that's all he was trying to do. And Mary was sitting down at his feet, you know, listening to the stories and listening to his parables and listening to his teachings. Meanwhile, Martha's in the kitchen busying herself, trying to impress God. And that's what a lot of us do. We get so caught up in religion that we try to impress God, like God doesn't know who we are. Or, you know, God knows exactly, our, he knows our heart. He knows that we may want to impress him, but in reality, we're human, we're flawed, we're gonna mess up, and trying to make it look good on the outside does not fool God. So the best thing that we can do is try to go to him and build that relationship and listen and, you know, just focus in on him. So, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. I know a lot of us try to be righteous enough or perfect enough for God, but if we could be perfect on our own, we would not need Jesus, as I say all the time, and as I'm sure many other people say. So there's no, there would have been no reason for Jesus to have died if we could just get it all right on our own. We don't have to focus on being perfect. What we are supposed to be doing is, you know, learning and becoming mature in the word ourselves so that we can help others get to where we are and to help others get closer to God. And we can't let allow distractions. That's what the enemy tries to do. You know, even, I won't even just say the enemy, our mind, we just naturally, just like with normal people, whenever we have guests over, we want to impress them. We want to have our house clean. We want to have the, have a good meal for them. We want to prepare everything so that it's to their standards and, you know, just show that hospitality. But in the meantime, we can miss out on relationship because we're so busy worrying about what something looks like instead of actually being ourselves and just 
being humble about our situation. None of our houses are always put together, especially if you got kids or, you know, other family members outside of yourself. And even if it's just yourself, if you're anything like me, messes get made, especially when you live a busy life, you're rushing to work or you're rushing to church or whatever, you, you just tend to make messes. So it happens and we can't try to clean up our life and make it look good for Jesus. We can't try to clean up everything in the world to make it look good even to the world because none of us are perfect so we just have to humble ourselves and stop focusing on things that don't matter we can't allow that to distract us from god now i know there's also the parable in luke that you know about the farmer scattering seed and it talks about distractions in that as well you know it talks about how it falls on the ground you know on the walking path and the birds or the enemy comes and takes the seed away immediately. So it doesn't grow, nothing prospers from that. And it's just like our faith. If somebody comes and tells us about God in passing, it's just like some some people, you know, it's just like it was thrown on the path, but the enemy came and took it away or, the, you know, life came and took it away before it even took hold in your heart. So it happens like that sometimes. Again, you know, it was taken away before you even got to ingest it, before you even got to get any kind of harvest. And then there is the rocky soil where it falls in the rocky soil, it grows, but it can't grow deep. So, you know, there is some growth and you're excited to this, you know, with the word, you're excited to receive the good news about Jesus and being saved. But the rocky soil, it just doesn't go deep. It's not deep enough. So, you know, when temptation comes, you fall away because it never got rooted in you deep enough. And then the thorns, that's what a lot of us, you know, we get distracted. Whenever it gets thrown into the, th the thorns, the plants can't receive the nourishment it needs because it's growing up with all of this crowdedness. It's too crowded. It can't thrive in this environment because there's so much choking it out. Um, I believe that's the word the Bible uses, the, the, you know, the thorns choke out the, pl the plant, so the plant dies. And that's how it is with our faith. You know, whenever we have too much crowding our mind, the world's pleasures, temptations, sin, just, you know, riches, good things even. When we have too much crowding our mind, there's no room left for Jesus. So we get distracted with busyness. We get distracted with our kids, our families, work, just life in general, money, physical things, everything in this world. And we forget about our spirit and the spirit of those around us. You know, we forget about our soul and end up neglecting that relationship with God because we are so distracted and we kind of put it off like, well, whenever I have time, I'll go to church or whenever I have time, I'll read my Bible. And then it never happens. 10 years down the line, you know, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, you die and you never had that relationship with God. So, you know, that's when it falls on thorns. But what we want to be is good soil. And that's when we have that, you know, good heart and good intentions. And we want to cling to the word. We put God first. We want to, you know, cling on everything. We read the Bible. We go to church. We have fellowship. We want, we are looking for God. We're seeking him because we know, you know, that's the importance. And that grows and it produces a harvest, a huge harvest is what the Bible says. So, you know, when we have that relationship, everything else falls into place. But whenever there are those other types of soil, when we aren't the right type of soil, we end up just getting distracted. We just end up getting caught up in the world. So we have to stop being distracted. You know, I know the Bible talks a lot about the Pharisees and how they would be so distracted with everybody else's sin. I know it mentioned Simon. Um, Simon was in Luke. I read about that a little bit ago, um, a few days ago. But, you know, Simon... Whenever the immoral woman, as the Bible called her, washed Jesus' feet with her tears and her, you know, expensive perfume, he he was like, if only he knew all the things that she had done, he wouldn't even want her to touch him. And Jesus was like, so, you know, Jesus talked in parables and he asked, you know, if, I can't remember the exact amount, but if, a loan, if you loan someone or if, <laughs> I can't get it together tonight. But anyhow, if someone loaned out money, and would they be willing to forgive the person who, or who do they love more? If they forgave the person with the higher debt or the lower debt, which person do they love more? And Simon was like, he loved the person with the lower debt more because he didn't have to forgive that person for as mu for much. And whenever he answered that, 
Jesus called him out. Like, look, I came in your house. You invited me here for dinner. You didn't even offer me no oil to anoint me. You didn't offer me any feet to wash the dust or any water to wash the dust from my feet. Like, you didn't show any type of hospitality. And here this woman is crying over me. You know, she's been kissing my feet, cleaning my feet with her hair and her expensive perfume. And you worried about her sin. She's literally showing me so much love right now. You didn't even bother. You had so little love because you had so little sin. You had, you thought you didn't have to do anything to be loved. But this woman, she knows she's a sinner and she wanted to show love. She wanted to use love. So my point in bringing that up is, you know, she, he was distracted. He was distracted with her sin. He was so distracted with her sin. He wasn't even thinking about what he was doing. He wasn't even focused on the fact that he didn't even, you know, offer Jesus any water to clean the dust off of his feet. He wasn't focused on anointing oil. He wasn't focused on anything other than what this woman was doing and what she deserved. And that's how a lot of us do in the world. We get on social media and we see this person who may not be, you know, the best person in the world or may not be desirable or whatever. And we think, well, why do they have it and I don't? We compare ourselves and talk about what they've done or what they deserve and we're not even focused on ourselves. If we would be more focused on ourselves and less focused on them, we would have a lot less problems. For one, we don't know that they are as happy as they look. We don't know that they have everything that it seems like they have. We don't know what they have going on in their life. We don't know their personal walk with God. We don't know what they deserve even. And in reality, we don't even know what we deserve. Half the time, we might be looking at somebody else's sin and so focused on that. And that's what happens whenever you start walking with God, a lot of us will read the Bible and as we're reading the Bible, and I'm guilty myself, I'm not even talking to none of y'all. We're going to speak to myself tonight, y'all. I'll be reading the Bible, and I'll be like, oh, it's talking about so-and-so. This is exactly what they be doing. The whole time, I missed the part where the Holy Spirit was trying to direct me in my own life. And I have to go back and reread it, and then I'm like, oh. Or the Holy Spirit will bring it back to my head. Like, you just read about that last night when I go back into you know, that same sin or go back into being judgmental, the Holy Spirit will remind me like, hey, you know, you just read that last night, girl, you need to get it together because you, you might've overlooked it, but I caught that. And I know you caught that. You might've tried to overlook it because you was looking at somebody else's sin, but you're doing this other sin that you read over also. So, you know, we can't be focused on them. We just gotta be focusing on ourselves and being better and acting in love. You know, if you see them and you're like, oh, they deserve, you know, they don't deserve this or whatever, maybe say a prayer for them. It can't hurt to bless somebody and your heart, it'll help your heart get into the right place and maybe give you some understanding and maybe even bless you for the simple fact you're over here, you know, trying to change those feelings and not allow yourself to feel bitter about what someone else has and just change, redirecting your focus and having faith in God to change you and we just like i said we have to read our bible read our word to look at ourselves we can't be looking at what other people are doing no that's not the way that we're, this is supposed to work we're supposed to act in love i know i say this all the time but if you are loving your neighbor as you love yourself which half of us don't even love ourselves that's that's a bit, another talk for another day but um if you're not loving god you know with your heart mind and soul and loving others as you love yourself, then you need to get that in order because we can't be out here hating on the next person for what they got going on or feeling like we deserve more because of what? Because we're walking with God and we try to do right. No, that's not, grace is not bought. So it's given freely. We get it by believing, we get it by having faith. Yes, there are blessings that come with walking in purpose and you know trusting God and knowing God but it's not because we earned it. It's because it, we need it to help further his purpose in the world. So don't get it twisted. Don't be looking at other people and let that distract you. Don't let the enemy tell you that you deserve more or that person doesn't deserve something and have you questioning everything that God has told you and distracting you from what your purpose is because everything is not always what it seems. And even if it is, that's on them. That's what they got going on. Let them be blessed, let them be happy. Focus on you. Maybe you can have the same things one day. And remember, ultimately, this world is temporary. You know, we're here for a little while and then we are hopefully going to be kicking it with Jesus. So we got to get it together and be focused on what we need to be doing. 
And the Bible says, you know, the harvest is plenty. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So we have to be doing our work. We can't be slacking. If it ain't enough workers, we gotta be doing our work. And we need to be doing it so that we can help others on our on their path and get them on the right track so they can be blessed also and so that they can be doing the same thing, helping with the harvest. So we got we gotta get our minds right. We gotta be focused on the right things. Can't allow distractions to make us miss our promise. And that's all I have for y'all tonight. I really hope that this was a blessing for you. I hope that it was a good message. It helped you. If it did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you have a blessed week. Tomorrow is Sunday, so I'm excited about that. I got some good news for you all coming soon in regards to church tomorrow, but I'm going to save that for later. So anyways, I hope you all have a blessed night. Thanks for watching. Thank you.